how well did you sleep last night? Like really? And maybe more importantly, how would you know? Believe it or not, there are three really important ways you can tell if you slept well. So stick around because by the end of this video, you're going to have an answer to that question for yourself once and for all. Hi, I'm Faith. Sleep can often feel like this enigmatic and unknowable part of life, and that can make it hard to judge the quality of it. I mean, you are unconscious for it, so how are you supposed to know if your sleep was bad or good? Well, let's turn to the science of sleep and first ask, what is sleep? When we sleep, we ebb and flow between four stages. Stage one, stage two, deep sleep, and REM sleep. Spending enough time in these stages is crucial to getting a rested night's sleep. So we know what good sleep is, but how do you know if you're getting it? One of the easiest ways to check your sleep quality is to check in with yourself and see how you're feeling. Now you might feel a bit tired and groggy when you first wake up, but that's just a normal part of leaving dreamland and rejoining the living. But there are a number of signs during the day that might indicate you're not getting enough sleep. Use this checklist to check in with yourself. Are you having a hard time falling asleep or getting up? Do you feel tired, drowsy, or downright sleepy during the day? Is it hard to focus at school, work, practice? Do you rely on caffeine like oxygen? Are you waking up multiple times a night? If you answered yes to any or even all of these, you're probably not getting the best sleep, and you might actually be suffering from sleep deprivation. Good sleep should leave you feeling refreshed with consistent energy, a stable mood, and a clear head throughout the day. But maybe you wanna gather even more information on how well you slept. For that, there are a suite of health and wellness trackers. These can give you some great data-driven insights into not just how long you slept, but the quality of that sleep. The gold standard for sleep tracking is something called polysomnography, or PSG for short. This is usually administered in a sleep lab and it measures things like your brain activity, your oxygen levels, your heart and respiratory rates, and even your eye and leg movements. Over the last decade though, there's been an explosion in the popularity of at-home wearable sleep trackers like Aura, Whoop, Fitbit, you know all the brands. And really, any smartwatch you buy today is going to offer you some rudimentary sleep tracking capabilities. Most of these trackers will monitor things like your heart rate, your respiratory rate, and help you see not just how long you slept, but how long you were in each stage of sleep. They don't match the accuracy and comprehensiveness of the PSG, but for a few hundred dollars, you can get something that offers a data-driven idea of the quality and quantity of your sleep. Sleep trackers are available in all shapes and sizes. You can get some that you wear and some that you tuck under your bed. But no matter what you choose, this is a good objective way to understand how well you slept. And finally, a great way to check how you're sleeping is to examine what you're doing before you get to sleep. Sleep hygiene refers to the day and nighttime habits you develop to improve your sleep quality. Good sleep hygiene involves optimizing your bedroom environment by keeping it cool, dark, and quiet sticking to a consistent sleep schedule for both getting in and out of bed, limiting the amount of screen and technology usage in bed, getting enough sunlight during the day, exercising and eating well, including reducing the amount of caffeine and alcohol consumption before bed, creating a relaxing wind down routine before bed, and using sleep aids only when necessary. And if you want to learn more about optimizing your sleep hygiene, we have a video all about that right here. And if you're doing all of these things and you still feel like you aren't getting good sleep, it might be time to talk to a sleep specialist about a possible sleep disorder. Sleep disorders come in all shapes and sizes, but some of the more common ones are insomnia, narcolepsy, and sleep apnea. Insomnia is characterized by difficulty either falling or staying asleep and is accompanied by daytime impairments related to those sleep troubles. Narcolepsy is a severe and persistent daytime sleepiness that can cause impairments in school, work, and social settings, as well as heighten the risk of serious accidents and injuries. And sleep apnea causes frequent pauses in breathing during sleep. Most people with sleep apnea experience symptoms such as loud snoring and daytime sleepiness. If any of these sound like symptoms that you may be suffering from, talk to a sleep specialist for a proper diagnosis and treatment options. You and your sleep will thank you. The daytime effects of a bad night's sleep usually lead to a worse night's sleep. And when those bad nights of sleep start stacking on top of one another, it can put you into something called a sleep debt. For more on what a sleep debt is and how to fix it, click our video on that here. 
Thanks for watching, everyone. Sleep well.